I'm just, I'm excited, okay? I haven't been this excited about a book, even though it's a reread. I'm just so happy to be reading this book again. I'm not okay. Y'all are horny. Y'all are horny. Why did I give this five stars again? Fuck you, Therian. I, oh my God, I'm so giddy over this book. I'm so giddy. I have a feeling something bad is going to happen. I'm trying to rein in my excitement because you guys. I, oh my God, I'm so giddy over this book. I'm so giddy, but that is not the purpose of this clip because I need to open this vlog. I have not done an opener yet. So hi, hello, welcome to my Crescent City reread slash reactions to House of Flame and Shadow. Oh my God, okay. So I wanted to hop on here and let you guys know that if you have not read the Crescent City series yet, this vlog is not going to be for you. I do go into some spoilers here and there. Most of it is more kind of out of context spoilers, but I don't want to be the reason that something gets ruined or spoiled for you. So if you have not read this series and you intend to, just click out of this video. This is not the video for you, okay? Um, but with that being said, yeah, I hope you enjoy. And yeah, we're gonna go back to December when I started my reread of the first book. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. I hope that you can see me. I'm at a little bit of a different angle and there's books on the floor and boxes on the floor. I wanted to update you all because I've started this book. Ugh, even though I've read it before, this is obviously this is a reread. I'm just so excited to be reading another Sarah J. Mass book with a new one coming like very soon. I'm so excited. I have read until chapter nine, a hundred pages. I'm gonna try to do a hundred pages a day. My problem is though, once I get into these books, I don't want to put them down. So I might read a little bit more tonight. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna go with the flow because I'm just, I'm excited, okay? I haven't been this excited about a book, even though it's a reread. I'm just so happy to be reading this book again. So a couple things that I want to point on. These two books, so the first two that I'm vlogging, are obviously going to be the first two in the series. So if you haven't read these, uh, maybe skip over these parts. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to go into spoilers. That's just going to happen. So just warning you right now, okay? If you have not read either of these books, just go ahead and click out. Click out of the video. Okay? So a lot happens. Well, does a lot happen? I don't know. It's it's a it's a gut punch, okay, in the first like 65 pages of this book, okay? We all know what happens with Danica in the pack, Connor, and oh, mm, I just, I knew it happened early on. I was expecting it. It's even in the synopsis that Danica dies, the pack dies. We know what happens, okay? And it just sucks the way that it happens. What I did not remember was how quickly Rune showed up and how quickly Hunt showed up. I forgot about that. And I forgot a really big part of this where Bryce, when she goes after the demon or whatever the thing is that attacked Danica in the pack, that her leg was hurt. And so she has like pain from it. And I want to say she walks, does she walk with a limp? Or maybe is it only every now and then? I don't remember, but I didn't remember that happening. I didn't remember that part. I remember her going after them, but I didn't remember her getting hurt. So yeah, there's that. And then her not being able to go to their funeral and Danica's mom just being a straight up bitch. She's a bitch. I don't like her. I don't like her. And I believe she only gets worse in here. Even the pack. Yeah. I'm going to shut up because now I'm remembering all this stuff and I just want to keep reading. But yeah, those are just some things that I've noticed right now. 
And I'm waiting for Hunt to be more in this. I don't know when that comes about. When does that come about? I don't know. But Rune, Danon, Crown Prince of the Valbaran Fae. I will never not be able to hear that when I think of him. I just hear that TikTok sound. If you know, you know. And if you don't, go and look it up. I love him. I love him. And his territorial protective self. I love him. So that's all that I have for now. I don't know if I'm going to update you at every hundred pages. We're just going to see how things go. So I'll see you when I see you. <music>
so I'm preparing myself. But yeah, that is, that's my update. And I will let you know whenever I, probably whenever I finish this book, I'll check back in. So yeah. So this is going to be a very quick update because I have mm, like 170 378 pages left so I'm gonna finish this tonight two things I wanted to update you all on um you remember when I said that Sabine was a bitch yeah yeah um do not like her and I don't remember if she gets what's coming to her I don't remember if she does but I really hope that she does because hmm, what she just put Hunt through I hate you I despise you and then here's a, I'm trying, so these will kind of, well, they'll, they'll be spoilers, but out of context, I don't want to go like too in depth about anything. What happens on the boat with the Viper Queen and Hunt and Victoria and Justinian, that just happened. And I completely forgot about that part. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to finish this, though. Pain is coming. I know this. I'll update you when I finish. Hopefully, I won't be crying too bad because I already know what's coming. I'm going to brace myself. <laughs> I'm not okay. I forgot, like I knew what was coming, but I didn't think that the second time around I would be as emotional, but maybe because I knew it was coming and I knew what to expect, that's what made me a little more emotional this time. I cried like probably the last hundred pages of this book. Lahaba, Bryce and Danica, Bryce and Hunt, and then like that, just that little like paragraph at the end where like the mist parts and she gets to see the pack and Connor waving at her. I'm gonna cry again if I think about it. I loved this so much more the second time around. I, I don't know what to do with my life once again. At least I have House of Sky and Breath to go into. I don't know if I'm going to start it right away, but ugh, I love it. I love it. That's all. I'll update you when I start House of Sky and Breath. <laughs> Hello, I have an update. So I'm currently on chapter 26. I believe I'm about it's 286 pages into House of Sky and Breath. And okay, I immediately when I opened this book, completely forgot who Sophie was. Like who, who is she? Who is she? And I still like, I remember now, obviously, but I don't know like what part her and her brother are going to have in this book. I don't remember that. So I'm very curious about that. Also, uh, I forgot how horny this book is. Like they are horny. Okay. Bryce and Hunt, y'all need to just do it. Just do it, please. Put everyone out of their misery. Put yourself out of misery and just, just do it. Just for the love of God, please do it. And even like Room, the first chapter you get of his POV, he's eating some girl out. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is, y'all are horny. Y'all are horny. Um, I also forgot how many different POVs you get in here. Therian, Bryce, Hunt, obviously you get Room, um, Ethan. I forgot all of that. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Also... Um, I'm a little bored. I am not even gonna lie. I'm a little bored. I'm like, okay, what can we move along? Can we, can something happen? Please, please. Um, 
what is her name? Selenia, the new archangel that takes Micah's place. I don't remember if we can trust her or not. Do we trust her? Do we like her? Is she good? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell though. But yeah, I'm going to keep reading this today. I want to at least read to, I'm going to try to get to 400 pages just because we are, it's Monday, the week before Flame and Shadow comes out. So hi, Cookie. I would like to get this done. Obviously, I'll have it done before that, but I don't want to just stretch it out too far. So I'm going to try to get this done within like four days at least. We'll see, but I will update you. Also, I want to show you my shirt because it's super cute and Cookie is here. Say hi. She's, she's a wild animal. Okay, look, I ordered this from Etsy. Isn't it so cute? I, I am obsessed. It's Umbra Mortis with his wings and ugh. I'll let you go. I'm I'm unsure of this angle. Does it look okay? I don't know. I feel like you're up very high. I have no idea. Anyway, I have an update because I have made it quite a ways through this bad boy. I am on chapter 47, page 518. I'm gonna read until 600 today because I have the time. So we're gonna get through this book. Uh, I don't, I feel like I don't have a lot to update you on because what has happened in this book? Like, I feel that nothing has happened. But the point that I just left off on about, let's see, probably like 400-ish pages in. No, it was a little over. So maybe like almost 500 pages in, action started happening. And also... Bryce and Hunt, they finally did it, okay? They finally, finally, they did it. I'm like, okay, can we move along now? Can we move along now? Ugh, I do not remember this feeling so long. And the pacing in here, I do not remember it being this bad. I think what happened, I think, <laughs> I think the end of this book muddled all of our brains and we're like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Five stars, five stars, simply for the ending alone. Because I'm reading this and I'm like, why did I give this five stars again? Because this is like, I feel like there's at least 200 pages of this that could have been cut out. A lot of it felt like filler. So We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll feel differently once I get to those like last 200, 150 pages because that's what Sarah J. Mass likes to do. She puts you through it in the last 100 pages or so of her books. So we'll see. But yeah, I feel like collectively we were all just like the end. Yeah, five stars. Five stars. But the rest of the book, I'm like, eh. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I'm making my way, making my way, and yeah, you know the drill. I'll update you when I have an update. Okay, <laughs> I might end up back in this same spot in like less than an hour because I have 59 minutes of the audiobook left. I'm on chapter 69. Things are about to get crazy, and I know it. I know it, and I don't know if I'm ready for it tonight because it's already... It's 8.39. I don't know if I can handle it tonight, but I feel like it's, it, yeah, it's been a while since I've updated you. So there are a lot of things that I completely forgot that happened in this book, like Cormac, his character in general, I forgot he existed. And then his and Bryce's engagement, like the fake engagement, like what was that? And then... I will mention that this book, they're still horny, okay? Everyone is horny. The most horny, okay? <laughs> Literally everyone. And this is also a lot of Danica keeping secrets from Bryce. She has kept so much from Bryce. So much. So, <sighs> okay. Uh, Baxian and Danica... That was kept from her. 
what else? Uh, the fact that Danica knew Sophie Renast. That was kept from her. Uh, Emil, the brother, the little brother with Sophie. Sophie's little brother. I completely forgot that he ends up with Bryce's mom and dad. Stepdad. Okay, like, there's there's been a lot that has happened, but it's not been, like, super exciting stuff. Not really. I forgot the bromance, too, that happens with Declan and Flynn and Ethan. That, that's adorable. I am really liking and appreciating Ethan's character more in this book. Well, I should say more the second time around than I did the first. Therian also. Why do we need his POV? I don't know. I'm confused. But yeah. So I might finish this tonight. We'll see. But yeah. I kind of, I just wanted to update you all before I finish this. Because I know at the end I'm just going to be like, what? what and I didn't want to have like an extremely long clip of me just rambling so I'm gonna go you might see me in the same get up in the same spot or you could see me tomorrow who knows you'll find out I don't think anyone is shocked that I finished this tonight um it's almost 10 o'clock I don't even, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Ugh, I need book three. We're days away, days away. And honestly, <laughs> oh my God. Um, Okay. <sighs> Rune and Day. They're mates. Okay, I'm saying it now. They're mates. They are mates. Um, what happened with Rune and Hunt at the end? Cormac? Therian? Fuck you, Therian. Um, he just left. He left. Like, he left. Um... I, oh my god, um, Ethan, like the very end, I completely forgot about the epilogue with Ethan and him saying he had to get back to his pack because Flynn and Declan and Rune and the whole gang, that's his pack now, that's his pack, um, forgot about the other Fendir air completely missed that but also the big thing the big thing hello Bryce Quinlan what is it I'm resand you shut your mouth you shut your mouth what exactly did he say yeah Hello, Bryce Quinlan. My name is Reese Hand. Where is book three? Where is book three? Actually, today, Sarah J. Mass and Bloomsbury, they have released the prologue and I think the first chapter of House of Flame and Shadow. Do I want to read it? Do I want... To read it probably not because I'm just gonna be <sighs> I don't know I need to go my brain is fried and I need to go to bed yeah I will see you when I have house of flame and shadow in my hands I'm so excited you guys
Oh my God. Okay. It's the day. It is the day. Yes. So I had to stop myself. I needed to eat lunch. Also needed to sort of get ready for the day, but I am 211 pages into House of Flame and Shadow. I, oh my gosh, I am giddy. I am giddy. I have not been this excited about a book in so freaking long. So this book picks right up where Sky and Breath left off. So we have Bryce with our Akatar crew. Okay, she is kind of sort of being interrogated by Reese and Asriel and Amryn and then Nesta comes in later. And then back in the Crescent City world, we have Hunt and Rune and Baxian in the Asteris dungeons being tortured, which I do want to mention that it's not as gory as I thought it was going to be. It's not as graphic as I was expecting. Still, I mean, there's, there's some bad stuff going on with them, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Also, we're getting more POVs in this book than we did even in House of Sky and Breath. And it's not even like a full chapter. So it's like switching between multiple POVs in one chapter. So that at the beginning was kind of throwing me off. I didn't really love that. But as the story has progressed, which I think having all those different POVs is progressing the story more. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's like I said, it's literally picked right up and we're finding out things and I'm just soaking up every second of it, okay? I am soaking it up. Okay, what has happened? What has happened? We have Lydia Day, the Hind. She is, she's working on a way to save Room. She's working on a way to save Room. And then you have Ethan and Declan and Flynn and that whole gang trying to work to get Therian out of the Viper Queen's grasp. And then you have Bryce, who is working very closely with Nesta because so something happened while Reese and Amran and Asriel were sort of interrogating her. Her tattoo lit up, the horn lit up. And Amran immediately was like, um, this is made. We need Nesta. So Reese winnowed Nesta in. And now they are sort of going through this like tunnel cave system and along the way there are stories like art um, throughout these caves and they're just depicting different things that have happened in the world that even Asriel and Nesta knew nothing about so that's been really cool to see and we're getting more of how the Asteri came to the Akatar world and how they fled and how they were defeated. And then we're getting more about Queen Thea and her daughters. And I will say that I do wish that I had read, reread House of Flame, no, House of Silver Flames, A Court of Silver Flames. Listen to me. I do wish that I had reread A Court of Silver Flames because the way that it's woven into this book and the little things like the death mask and the cauldron and the harpy and the horn, things like that. I wish that I would have reread it, but I'm, I'm following everything because I have the knowledge of Silver Flames, but I do wish I could have just like brushed up on it. Um, and I do, I really like how much Nesta is in this book. And I also am freaking ecstatic to have Asriel in this as well. Oh, cause he's like one of my favorites from the Akatar series. So I'm loving that. Yeah, I think, are those all of my thoughts for now? Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm missing so much, but also it would be boring if I just sat here and like spewed everything out to you. So yeah, I, I'm sure I will update you again today. I don't, I, I don't even like plan I don't have a plan on how much I want to read today. I'm just going to read until I don't want to anymore. And then if I don't want to, I won't. I, like I won't stop. But yeah, I'll update you and yeah, I'm going to shut up. Goodbye. Sorry for the weird angle, but this just keeps getting better and better. 
I am so loving the way that she is weaving the Akatar world and things that we didn't even know about. Like it's, oh, I, I just, I love the way that she has done this and put these two worlds together. I am obsessed. Like, I don't even know what to say. I'm just like, nothing good has happened in this book so far, but I'm still like smiling. I don't know why. Why am I smiling over things that are not good? But I, it's, I've waited two years for this book. So I'm just, I'm loving it. That's all I have to say. I'm gonna keep reading. Sorry if this is shaky, I'm holding it with my hand. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna go. I am on chapter 43, 379 pages into House of Flame and Shadow. I think I might read a little bit more tonight. I might try to make it halfway through, but I don't wanna get it pretty much any further than that. I, taking my time, I have been switching back and forth between the like reading physically and then listening to the audiobook and following along. I'm really enjoying that. So, what has happened? Oh my gosh, everything has happened. So, Bryce is no longer in the Akatar world. She is back in Crescent City. When she left, though, she didn't go straight to where Hunt and Rune are. She went to her father because she had an inkling that, mm, I think you know something about the Star Sword and Truth Teller, Asriel's dagger. She was right, and she definitely gave her father what he deserves, okay? And I think, like, the best is just yet to come for him, or should I say the worst is yet to come. Also, when I said in my update earlier that things were not very gory with Rune and Hunt and Baxian being in the dungeon, I was wrong. I was very wrong. Um, I did not expect... Baxian to literally bite off Rune's hand. Excuse me, what? <laughs> um, Lydia ended up getting them out, but she kind of died in the process, but then they brought her back to life. So now we have pretty much the whole gang back on the ship. I forget exactly what the ship is. It's the Ocean Queen's ship that she helps Ophian with and the like whole city. Um, so Lydia and Rune and Hunt and Declan and Therian, they're all there. They're all there. We also learned that Lydia has twin boys. We don't know yet if they are Pollux's, which I'm going to assume that they are, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And Rune is definitely regretting how he's treated her because he was pissed when he found out that she was the hind. He was pissed. And basically the whole time that he was in the dungeons with the Asteri, he like wanted nothing to do with her, but she ended up getting them out. So now Bryce has left her father, left the Autumn King, and she teleported to Hunt. And it was the most epic way that she could have like just dropped in there because the Ocean Queen was having a meeting with Therian and Rune and Hunt and Baxian and Bryce was just like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm queen. So she like announced herself as queen. And then the Ocean Queen was like, is your father still alive? And she's like, mm, for now, for now. So now they are going to where the Avalon Fae live where Cormac was from because she got some info from her dad about the Star Sword and the Truth Teller about how to kill the Asteri. So, very interested. Also, I, I went into this book, I was trying to go into this book without any expectation of the Akatar cast playing a huge part in this because I knew Bryce is going to do whatever she could to get back to Hunt and Rune. I knew that. I knew, like, it wasn't going to be this whole drawn-out thing. But I feel like it just ended kind of quickly. Like, it was very anticlimactic with that. So, I don't know. I mean, I still have, like, half of the book left. So, 
maybe they'll come back into play. I don't know, but I feel like, again, I do have half the book left, but I think some people might be let down with how little she was actually in the Akatar world and how kind of little, at least until this point, that those characters have played in the book. Because, I mean, a lot of us have waited two years and the ending of that book was epic, epic. So I feel like mm, maybe some people might be a little disappointed by that. But again, I was trying to tamper my expectations because this is not their world. This is not their story. Would I like to see them again? Sure, but I'm not expecting it. I think they played their part. Bryce learned what she needed to learn there. So yeah, we'll see though. We shall see. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, Therian. Therian is no longer with the Viper Queen. Um, because Ethan actually fought the Fendir heir to, like, earn all of their freedom out of there. And then Ethan felt bad because he killed her. So now he's gone to Jessica Roga, which... Mm, we find out what Jessica actually is and a little bit of her history. So Ethan is in the House of Flame and Shadow trying to find a necromancer to bring back the Fendir heir. So he can kind of change the world, the way of the wolves. So yeah, there's a lot that's been going on. A lot. And I'm loving it. I'm still loving it. So yeah, I don't know if I'll update you again tonight. I may just wait until in the morning until I've read a little bit because if I want to make it halfway through, I don't have too much longer. I think it's what, like 417, 18 pages. So I only have like that much left until I'm exactly halfway through. So we'll see, but I'm going to stop rambling and I'll catch you later. Okay, so Hunt was made by... The Princess of Hell to be a weapon for Bryce to use. What? Ha! Huh. Okay. I need to keep reading. Maybe I need to reread this part too. What? You guys are going to be getting the front camera, no makeup me just sitting on the couch reading this book reactions, probably for the last little bit because, listen, they've been in a Valen for quite a while and I have a feeling something bad is going to happen. I just, I have a gut feeling. And last night when I was reading The Autumn King and Morvin, which is the king of the Avalon Fae, Cormac's dad, they had taken Declan and Flynn hostage, and they were in the tunnels that, or the caves, that Bryce and Hunt and Baxian are in. I think something something's going to happen. But the Princess of Hill, I mean, like... I feel like I knew that they were going to play a part in this world, but I didn't really think how big of a part they were going to play. Like this whole time they've been guiding Bryce, like nudging her along, like, yeah, here you go. Like, you know, but then Bryce at the very end, they were talking to Adis and Apollyon and the other guy. They told her, open the Northern Rift. We will send our armies. We will help you defeat the Asteri. And she's just like, mm, I'll think about it. What? What do you mean you'll think about it? What do you mean you'll think about it? I don't know. I don't know. But I have a feeling that, like something... The Autumn King and Morven, they're going to do something. Something is, something's going to happen. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Not at all. 
Okay, your boy Rune, he just showed up in time. He just, he, he made it there, okay? And he uh, drove his sword, the star sword, right through the Autumn King's heart. Yeah, 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 okay. These POV shifts are driving me insane. Like, I get it. I totally get why we're getting them. But when something really exciting just happens in one chapter with Bryce and Hunt, and then we shift to Ethan's POV, I'm like, Sarah, Sarah, what are you doing to me? <laughs> what are you doing to me? I take back what I just said about being annoyed about it switching to Ethan's POV because he is now prime wolf. Excuse me? What? None of these updates are probably going to make any bit of sense if you have not read this book, which you probably don't watch this. You probably haven't made it to this point, honestly, if you haven't read the book. But Bryce and Hunt are just like they're at the Northern Rift and she's trying to open up the gates to hell for the army. But no, she decides to open up the gate to another world and it says Bryce stood before the wall of darkness darkness flecked by starlight a female with golden brown hair sat in an armchair before a fireplace on the other side of it all that darkness was the starry night beyond her windows and her face was a portrait of pure shock as Bryce lifted a hand in greeting and said hello Nesta Ah, okay. I was wondering if that was it from the Akatar world. Like, that can't be all. That can't be all. That's not all that Sarah. Like, Sarah wouldn't tease us that way, right? I wasn't going to be mad if we didn't get it. But I think they're back. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel like I have so much book left, but I really don't. Like, I don't. And then I keep picking up the phone to update you. So I need to go get ready for the day, honestly, but I don't want to stop reading, especially now. Shit is hitting the fan. Shit is hitting the fan. I had to take a little break. I had to run to the post office and mail some stuff off, which I absolutely hate doing, but I stopped at chapter 86, 717 pages into the book. And y'all, I, I do not have a good feeling about the end of this book. I do not. Things have been falling into place too easily. I mean, like, yeah, they've had a rough time, but like right now our characters, like things are falling into place. They're falling in line. Good things are happening. There's change on the horizon, and I just, I don't see it staying that way. I truly don't, and I am scared. I'm scared. So, Bryce opened the Northern Rift. Well, she didn't open the Northern Rift. She opened it to Nesta, got the Death Mask, which is really good because the Harpy, which... I, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but like earlier in the book, before Lydia had got Rune and Hunt and Baxian out of the Asteri's dungeons, the Harpy was killed. Um, but the Asteri Rigelis used some of Hunt's power to bring her back to life. And so she was actually there at the Northern Rift. So Bryce ended up using the mask to take her down. She's also going to use the mask to obviously defeat the Asteri. She's going to like raise an army of the dead, the fallen, and try and beat the Asteri. She did also open the Northern Rift to hell, so their giant army. And I'm just imagining the army of the dead, the White Walkers army, you know, from Game of Thrones. That's what I'm imagining, like, in this world. Because it's, like, pretty massive. But... Yeah, but then right after that happened, they got a call saying that Pollux 
somehow found out about Lydia's two sons and he has them and he took them to the Eternal City. So they're all going there. They're all going there. I just, I don't see this going well and I still have so much book left. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. But I think McKay and I later are gonna like FaceTime or something to finish the book. So at least I'll have her for moral support for, you know, <laughs> reactions and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm scared. I am terrified. I finished. Um, I didn't get any reactions because, well, I was, me and McKay got on StreamYard and so we were reading together. And also I just wanted, I just wanted to soak it in. I just wanted to read it. So, oh my God, <laughs> things wrapped up far nicer than what I expected them to. Like I expected this to go way wrong. And I know like in my last update, I'm like, I have a bad feeling. I have a really bad feeling. But no, like things wrapped up nicely, like so nicely that I'm like, how is there going to be another book? Like there's a few other things that are kind of left untold, but not big things. It's like small little things with side characters, like possibly the Viper Queen. Is she going to maybe try and do something? Um, things with Therian and his wife, Sathia, Scythia. That does not sound right. Um, Flynn's sister. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, how is there going to be another book? How is there going to be another book? I don't know. Um, okay. Let me try and think of what all happened since I last updated you. So, Pollux is dead. Obviously, all the Asteri are dead. Uh, Bryce died, but then Jessiba, Jessiba gave her life for Bryce. And I cried. Oh my gosh. Because she got to see Danica in the pack again and Lahaba. She got to see Lahaba. Ugh. So, yeah, it was good. And then what else tripped me up to? Like, it got me. So, Bryce, basically, when the Star Sword and the Truth Teller, when they come together, and now that Bryce has all of Thea's power, she was able to, like, open a portal, basically like a black hole. And that's kind of how she, that's how she defeated the Asteri. She, like, sucked them into a black hole, but she also sucked herself into the black hole, you know, in the process. So, Hunt went in after her. He put on one of the mech suits that they were, I think that came up in Sky and Breath. They were like building these like tech suits, basically like soldiers that would just do whatever the Asteri wanted, but without like having a body in it. It was just, you know, a tech suit, a mech suit. So Hunt got in one that Sahar, because Bryce, I mentioned raised the fallen with the mask that she got from Nesta. Sahar, who, you know, Hunt was in love with, who he, they led the rebellion. Anyway, Sahar went in there with him and she basically guided the bullet to Rigelus that let Hunt get Bryce out of there. So, that tripped me up a little bit. And then when, so I don't think I mentioned that in order to get the mask from Nesta, Bryce left her parents in the Akatar world. And so when she went back to get her parents, Nesta and Bryce's mom had bonded and that little moment between them ugh, made me, it made me tear up. I'm not even gonna lie. And I know that I had said before that I, felt like I should have reread Silver Flames and like in that moment I'm like yeah because knowing all that Nesta went through with her mom that like I knew it, that just meant a lot to Nesta so Ugh. but yeah things just 
wrapped up so neatly so I don't really know like what to say. Oh, oh, Lydia's son, Bran, Brandon. That's from the Throne of Glass world. What is she doing with that? Where is she going with that? Where is she going with that? I don't know. But I feel like I don't have much else to say. But then at the same time, I'm like, am I forgetting stuff? I don't know. But I don't know if any of this portion of the vlog is going to make any sense. Because it's literally just me rambling every time I start recording. But yeah, that's I'm going to end the vlog here. Unless I feel like I forget something when I'm editing and then I might like hop back in. But yeah, I'm giving this five stars. I truly enjoyed it. I really liked the pacing throughout. There were a few points where I'm like, okay, can we like speed things up a little bit? But I think it's just because I, like the beginning of this book, it was nonstop. There were things happening nonstop and then you have them finding stuff out left and right. So you could definitely feel the slower moments and even the slower moments weren't slow. It was just like a little break in pace. Uh, there were some moments also where I like wanted to just str not strangle Bryce, but like she was she was being a little annoying, kind of very hard on Hunt. But like he was in the dungeon again, a place that he never wanted to go back to with two of his friends. He had to watch two of his friends be tortured and he got out of that again. And then he didn't know where Bryce was or if she was even alive. So, yeah, he was going through some stuff and she was basically like, like, get over it get over it. I need you. And eventually they did talk. So thank you for that. But there were a few moments. And then I wanted her when she was with Asriel and Nesta in the beginning. I'm like, you need to trust these people, trust these people. But again, like they don't know each other. She doesn't know this world. They don't know her. They're both very wary. So like it made total sense. Um, but yeah, it, it was nice to see Nesta and Asriel and get to spend a little bit of time with them in this world and now I'm just ready for the Akatar book six. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thank you guys for watching. If you have read House of Flame and Shadow, let me know your thoughts down below but put like a spoiler warning just in case which people shouldn't be in these comments if they haven't read them but let me know what you thought of it. Did it end how you thought it would? Where do you think the next book is gonna go. Yeah, if you've made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you because I know this is gonna be really long. If you, let's see, leave me a crescent moon in the comments down below, it's very fitting. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.